Windows are the connectors between our indoor living spaces and the outside world. They frame our view, bring in natural light, help ventilate our homes, add architectural character. But there is one aspect which has been very often neglected. What if I told you that the wrong type of window could be causing you discomfort, costing you hundreds of dollars each year and even making you sick? My name is Anton Dobrovsky, I'm a past house trainer and I've taught hundreds of professionals how to design energy efficient and comfortable buildings. And windows play a huge role in such buildings. So in this video, I'll talk about energy efficient windows and I want to share what you should be looking for when choosing the windows for your project. So you can save a lot on energy bills, but also live in a much more comfortable environment. One common issue of standard windows are the cold interior surfaces. Especially in the winter months, traditional single and double glazed windows can let a lot of the interior heat escape. So the surface of the window becomes cold and it can become so cold that even condensation can occur on the inside. And that's not healthy neither for you nor for your pets. And there's a cat of a friend of mine and that cat has problems with the bladder. Well, guess why is that? Another problem that many homeowners face is mold. And it's not only about the visual appearance and that it looks ugly, but it can be very dangerous for the health as mold spores can lead to respiratory issues. Another thing related to this is the comfort. You might have noticed that when sitting near a window in winter, it's almost like the cold is seeping in and you can even experience this with new standard windows. That's because the difference in the temperature between the Window surface and the inside air is too big and it can cause discomfort. That's why in old buildings you'll find radiators under every single window. So the radiator creates like a warm curtain and compensates for the cold surface of the window. And of course, with this comes also the high heat losses and high energy bills. We have to compensate for all this heat that is lost through the window, which is another reason why standard windows have radiators under every single window, because we need all this heating to compensate for the energy that we lose through the windows, which is money that we're just throwing away and we could otherwise save. And standard windows are just as bad in summer because they will lead to overheating if they don't provide adequate protection from the sun's heat. So we'll have to pay extra to cool down our buildings. So windows are not just about connecting us with the outside world, but they're about creating a comfortable and energy efficient living environment. But what kind of window should we choose to achieve this? Well, when we think of a window, the first image that might come to mind is a simple pane of glass in a frame. But a window is so much more complex than that, especially when we talk about energy efficiency. A window is not simply a window. The window consists of different components and we should look into each of these different components that a window is made of to understand how we can address the problems that I just mentioned, but also how to choose the proper windows. Let's first start with the frame. The frame is what holds the window in place and it can be made out of a lot of different materials like wood, aluminum, UPVC, etc. And for high performance windows, there isn't right or wrong. When it comes to the materials, we can have any of these materials, but what's important to consider is how well the frame is insulating. So what you should be looking for is the so-called UF value, which shows how well the frame is insulating and the lower the value is, the better. So the UF value of energy efficient frames is around 0.8 watts per square meter Kelvin. And it is also recommended to choose narrow frames because this will maximize the area of the glass. And our goal is to minimize the heat losses while maximizing the heat gains through the windows because they are the only component in our envelope through which we gain energy. And more specifically, we can only gain energy through the glass. So we want to have more glass and less frame. So the second component is glazing, but what kind of glass should we choose? Well, in cooler climates like the UK or the northern parts of the US, you should go for triple glazing. In warmer climates like southern parts of the US, double glazing might be acceptable. But ultimately to decide what windows to put and which would be the most cost effective option, you should have an energy model of your project. As Passive House professionals, we use the software Passive House Planning Package, also called PHPP for this. And when we talk about glazing, it also consists of different components. So within the IGU or insulated glazing unit, we have of course the glass panes. So in double glazing, we have two panes, in triple, three panes, etc. And on each of those panes of glass, we can have coatings, which can further optimize the energy efficiency. And 
Last but not least, we have the gas, which is in the gap between the panes. So for energy efficient windows, this gap should be filled with either argon or krypton. So all these qualities of the insulated glazing unit can be summarized in two numbers. The UG value, which is similar to the UF value of the frames and shows how well the glazing is insulating and the lower it is, the better. For triple glazing, this should be around 0.6 watts per square meter Kelvin. And the other important value is the G value, also referred to as solar heat gain coefficient, which shows how much energy we gain through the sun, or in other words, how much solar gains we have. And for cold climates, this should be around 0.6, so we can gain as much heat from the sun, which passively heats up our building in winter. And in warm climates, however, we want to prevent overheating, and therefore the G value in hot climates should be lower. Then we have the spacers. These are the elements that maintain the gap between the panes. And the best spacers are plastic spacers, also called warm edge spacers. Another important thing about windows is the way they're installed in the wall, as they should be installed inside the insulation layer and not in the structural layer, as it is done in most cases. Because if you have the same window, the same frame, glazing, etc., installing the window in the structural layer can increase the heat losses through the window by more than three times. And therefore, it doesn't matter how good and energy efficient the window is if it is not installed properly. So by taking into account each of these components that a window consists of and optimizing them, or in other words, choosing the components with the right values, we can have high performance and very energy efficient windows. The energy efficiency of windows, however, is not only about the windows themselves. The design and orientation of the building are also very important because let's say you have a project in the UK with big unshaded south facing windows. That's great because we can utilize these passive solar gains. So the windows should be optimized for this and more specifically the G value. However, if you have highly shaded windows or windows facing north, and that's for the northern hemisphere, then we won't have a lot of solar gains. So we need a different type of window and namely one optimized for less heat losses or in other words, it should have lower U values. We should also consider the type of window, whether it is fixed, operable or sliding window. In terms of energy efficiency, fixed windows are the best because they have the narrowest frames and they're very airtight. But keep in mind, it is recommended to have at least one operable window in every living space. So there should be a balance between fixed and operable windows. And be careful with the sliding windows because most of them are not airtight, meaning there will be cold air seeping in through the sliding mechanism. So if you want to have sliding windows, better choose lift and slide. And many people would say, oh, but energy efficient windows are expensive. Well, of course they're more expensive. They're better windows of higher quality and you'll get better comfort, but that's not everything. Yes, the additional investment for such windows is a bit higher compared to standard ones, but this investment will pay off only after a few years due to all the saved energy. Because high performance windows have a positive effect on the energy balance of the building. Let me explain. When Calculating the energy efficiency of a window, on one side we have all the heat losses and on the other side we have the heat gains. When the heat gains are less than the losses, we have to compensate for this and we do this with the heating system. Or in other words, we spend money and energy to compensate for these heat losses and that's the case with standard windows. However, through the high performance windows we gain more energy than we lose because they insulate better while maximizing the solar heat gains and this results in net gains or in other words, energy that we save. So when we talk about investments, we should not only talk about the initial investment, but also about the energy demand and what the period for the return on the investment is, whether it is two, five or eight years, but also what exact windows to choose, what exact values they should have can be easily calculated and determined with an energy model in the passive house planning package. So energy efficient windows will save you a lot of money and create a much more comfortable environment. But be careful as they're also very airtight and that's good because they're effective in reducing outside noise. However, there is also a problem with this because whether you're renovating a building or building a new one, if you put energy efficient windows, but don't ventilate the building properly, you have huge problems because mold will start growing everywhere inside. And it doesn't matter how energy efficient and comfortable the space is if it is not healthy to live in it. So if you want to learn what the best way is to ventilate your home, make sure to check out this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.